Mpiwe is still at the Abantu Book Festival taking place at the Air to Lifestyle Center in Soweto. And this morning he has been speaking to so many influential voices in the literary space. He spoke to author uh, Zeik Da. He spoke to the founder of the book festival itself. He also spoke to Zanele Ndrovu, who is a storyteller. I wonder who he's standing by with next. Let's take a look at what's happening at the Abantu Book Festival. And Pearl, in addition to those authors that I've just uh, mentioned, uh, you know, young female South African authors are now finding their voice and space in the literature space, you know, and telling stories in the best way that they know how to. And uh, Classic Case is author of the yearning Mohale Mashigo, who is on my left, and uh, Malebo Sepodi on my far left, who penned Misbehave, and uh, they will be headlining this year's Abantu Book Festival. A very good morning to you, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome. Thank you for having us. Thank you. It's great. All right. Now, well, Mohale, I'm going to start with you. You're debut novel, The Yearning, was recently reprinted. What does it mean to you personally as a writer, given the fact that uh, it's just a debut novel? Well, you know, I had very low expectations. I'm just going to be honest. So to find out that it was reprinted more than once, more than three times, I was just like, wow, it, it means a lot to me because it means people connected with something that I wrote. And they, I wasn't a big name. They didn't know who I was. They just trusted the work. Are you at all surprised at the success, phenomenal success that the book has gone through? Every single day, pinching myself, pinching myself, is this really happening? When people say, you know, South Africans don't read, it's difficult for debut authors. So it's really incredible. Indeed, I can imagine. Now, Malebo, uh, how was Misbehave uh, received? <laughs> um, to my surprise, just like Mohale said, I, I thought that people were going to have like serious issues with it because I was addressing issues of power patriarchy I was calling a lot of people out right and I thought I was going to be dragged for days on Twitter <laughs> but to my surprise I've received nothing but love you know um, uh, somebody told me not to read reviews um, when people read your book they write reviews so somebody said don't read the reviews but I do read the reviews and thank God I haven't come across uh, terrible reviews just one <laughs> when somebody says said that my the, the issues of feminism um, um, great their scrotum like a cheese grater. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, then I've achieved my mission, eh? Because issues of power are uncomfortable. Yeah. So my book is quite uncomfortable, uh, but I've received great responses, especially from book clubs. I've, I've been to so many book clubs that I didn't even know existed. So every single weekend, I was invited by a book club to discuss the book. Calling people out and your title, Misbehave. I'm kind of curious. What did you mean by that? Well, um, misbehave is kind of a play on words, right? So it's M-I-S-S -S and then behave, um, playing on the, the word misbehave. And, and it's premised on um, the quote that says, um, well-behaved women seldom make history. So it talks about how we as women in particular have always been conditioned and socialized to fit in a certain box. So if you act out of that box, you're, you're called a misbehaving woman. You know, you're called uh, a woman who, who's not a lady. You know, so there's certain ways that you need to behave in order to be accepted in society. So misbehavior is saying um, patriarchy has kind of oppressed us, racism has kind of oppressed us. There's a lot of issues, you know, ableism has kind of oppressed a lot of marginalized bodies. And we want to say we want to own our bodies and we want to be who we want to be in a form of misbehavior. So when you, when you, when you address issues like that, you're calling people out on their privilege. So you're saying patriarchy has privileged you to, has called you the head for so long. But listen here, honey, I am my own head. I'm no one's neck. <laughs> go girl, go girl. <laughs> Talk to us about your conversation with Kutlana last night. Well, I was in conversation with Malebu last night and we were, we were talking about, you know, how we came to find our voice as writers and how difficult it was for us to actually appreciate the fact that we are writers, you know, because it's, it's such a huge title. So I was saying to Malebu, the first time I discovered I was a writer was when I was at my first book launch and the kind of the processes that we go through. So do you think that the conversation uh, is flowing much smoother between writer and writer? Well, I always find it is because we kind of have the same experiences. We're on this side of things. Whereas sometimes I find if I'm in conversation with somebody who's not a writer, it's all of those questions like, what is your inspiration? Yeah, right. <laughs> what is your inspiration? <laughs> now, speaking of inspiration, if I read your book, what is that one thing that you want me to take away with? 
I think it's a story of healing, you know, and I, I think uh, people go through different types of healing. And the main character, Marubini, finds herself, that she finds that she's broken, she's falling apart. And she goes through this journey. And I, I just want people to understand that there are different ways of healing. Yes, you can absolutely go to therapy, but there's also, you know, traditional African ways that you can heal as well. And Marubini goes through this healing process. And I hope that when people finish the book, they'll think about their own healing process. So what is that one thing that stood out for you between your conversation with her? Um, when we were talking about, I don't know if I can mention this on national TV, but we were talking about the fact that because of how we, we were brought up and how we look at our bodies, we're not, we, we don't talk comfortably about issues of sex, right? issues of our bodies. And there are certain scenes in Mohale's book um, that she writes beautifully between two bodies having sex. And I, and, and, and I think when I asked her the question of when you wrote those scenes, did you see them as erotic scenes or what were you doing? And, and, and her answer was, was amazing when she said, that no, she just wanted to show um, the, the character that she was building, different parts of the character. And I think these are parts that we normally do not talk about. So for me, it was the kind of groundbreaking conversations we we're having, not the usual. We were, we were like two girlfriends, you know, having wine on a Saturday day, on a Saturday night and just chatting about writing and life and mental illness because we don't talk a lot as well as black women about uh, mental health issues. And that's one thing that we touched on as well as how writing has saved our lives or reading other black women's stories have saved our lives and if you see yourself in Mohale or Malebo, if you see certain things that resonates with you, it can save your life because you sometimes we think we are alone in our issues especially issues of mental um, illness but when you see that oh there are people who live with this openly and they, they find ways of healing, maybe I too can find a way of healing so that was also a very important part of the conversation yesterday Quite profound indeed Now I'm yearning to know if there will be a sequel to Yearning we are so yearning to read another one. <laughs> so much of yearning. Did my publisher send you? <laughs> I'm working on the next one. Uh, the yearning took me 10 years, but I've been told not to take 10 years with the next one. So it'll be out shortly, shortly. Give me time. Give me time. Yeah. Just uh, 20 seconds to the both of you. Do you think that uh, South African writers are addressing issues of patriarchy? Just uh, 10 seconds each. I definitely do think that we are because writers reflect the society and I feel like the new crop of writers yeah. that are coming up and even old writers, they were addressing the issues that were pertinent. That's a writer's job. My work comes off from uh, decades of women, black women writers on the continent and in our country. But the problem is they had been erased or just shut aside for a long time. So my work is premised on the type of work that I read that come from black women who've been addressing issues of power and patriarchy. Girls, I love your energy. I absolutely love your energy. You know, you make reading your books such fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for chatting to us this morning. <laughs> well, there we have it. Uh, two of our great writers, uh, uh, the author of The Yearning, Mohale Mashiho, and Malebo Sipodi, who penned Misbehave. And they are also headlining this year's Abantu Book Festival. Let's now take a short break. We'll be right back with more right after this. This is Morning Live.